NASA's previously acknowledged that SLS is unaffordable. A few days ago, due to skyrocketing costs that have exceeded initial estimates by more than $5 billion. It seems like NASA's SLS has never created peace of mind for the American people. On the contrary, SpaceX and Elon do this more firmly and reliably. Things seem to be getting worse for NASA, as they just announced the nearly 40 problems they're having with the SLS rocket. This sounds silly, but it's true. So, what exactly are those problems? Will NASA be able to solve them all? And how long is it going to take? By the way, how can SpaceX assist NASA? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. We had to wait a long time to see NASA's massive space launch system take off into the sky at Kennedy Space Center last November. Although the mission was successful, there may have been many technical issues with the moon rocket, as revealed in a response to a recent Freedom of Information Act request on September 14th. The report outlines a total of 37 abnormalities across various systems, including errors from Exploration Ground Systems, Flight Operation Directorate, Orion Spacecraft, SLS rocket, and debris. To be honest, the rocket system is made up of thousands of components, so 37 abnormalities are likely only the major and more serious issues that occurred during the rocket's mission. First of all, Orion's been assessed to perform quite well on the Artemis 1 mission, impressing NASA with its energy production capacity. However, other systems, such as some circuit breakers, have posed problems as the spacecraft moved around the moon in return. Some of the issues with Orion are related to valves, sensors, and pressure regulators. Another area of concern was the Orion spacecraft's heat shield. The team found that the heat shield had worn in a different way than models had predicted. The heat shield's ablative, meaning it's designed and expected to erode somewhat during re-entry into the atmosphere. Part of that heating to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit that you'd encounter on a re-entry is that you're going to see a charring kind of material, Howard Hu, the manager of Orion program, explained. Kind of what you do when you barbecue. However, what was seen on the Orion's heat shield was that some small pieces were coming off, rather than a general ablation. The team's now looking through sensor data and using visual inspection to understand this issue further. He emphasized that the degradation of the heat shield was within acceptable limits. We had a significant amount of margin left over, he said. This margin is designed to allow for variations in the atmospheric environment that the spacecraft will pass through, while still keeping the crew inside safe from the heat. Secondly, the SLS rocket launch tower has stirred quite a bit of controversy following the Artemis 1 mission, as many media outlets reported the extent of damage to the launch platform. After the flight, NASA engineers and technicians had to climb hundreds of steps up the tower to assess the damage and make repairs following an elevator malfunction caused by the launch. During the launch of Artemis 1, some damage to this structure was caused by the tremendous 3,000 degree Fahrenheit heat from the SLS's boosters. The pressure from firing the engines blew the doors off two of the elevators within the mobile launcher. There are a few things that did receive more damage than expected, including some of the pneumatic lines. After launch, the pad lost gaseous nitrogen supply, which delayed the flow of the water that would have rinsed off some of the old solid rocket booster residue early. Because of that, some of the pneumatic lines got corroded. There is additional damage to the blast plates around the flame hole, which were damaged by heat. Moving on to the rocket, the star of the show, NASA reported seven anomalies. These included loss of communications with a sensor system that reports propellant temperatures, unexpected debris on a plug that prevents containments from entering an engine's combustion chamber from under the rocket, and vibrations throughout the rocket in several components, such as those between the tanks and the flight termination system, that's responsible for destroying it in flight if the vehicle threatens life or safety on Earth. Does this mean a bucket of water has been poured on Artemis's next mission? Indeed, there are numerous issues plaguing NASA's moon rocket system, and they've only recently made a clear announcement about it. When the rocket launches, it's only performing an unmanned mission. So the question arises, when the next SLS mission includes a crew, does it have the capability to ensure their safety? This is perhaps a challenging question to answer, as we still have no info on the repairs and fixes for the tech issues with both the SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft. Many believe that these technical issues aren't necessarily a reflection of NASA's engineers' competence, but rather a result of the outdated technology of the SLS rocket, which harks all the way back to the 70s. Much of SLS is a holdover from the space shuttle. NASA had 16 leftover shuttle main engines and 14-foot-long cones that were clustered in arrays on the bottom end of the shuttle orbiters. Those will be repurposed to power SLS. But while the shuttle orbiter, engines, and external tanks were designed to be reusable, SLS and its engines were not. The first Artemis flight used old shuttle engines. The next planned launches will use others. On the other hand, not only does it operate with an old program, but the moon rocket also has the problem of sky-high costs. 
The financial constraint is also one of the reasons behind the delays and might indirectly contribute to the technical issues of the SLS as they wait for funding solutions for the high expenses. NASA argues that it's using the most tested rocket engines in history and that recycling them for the moon saves money, but not that much money, it turns out. In early 2022, NASA's inspector general told Congress that the first three flights of the SLS would be $4.1 billion apiece, a level he called unsustainable. NASA and Boeing later said that the price tag would be lower, and outside analysts have said each launch would cost between $876 million and $2 billion, depending on how you break down overhead costs. They've designed a rocket that is basically unsustainable because it's a complete throwaway. The only bit that comes back is Orion, says Clive Neal, a lunar geologist at Notre Dame and an outspoken critic of NASA's moon plans. I get incredibly frustrated. Furthermore, an independent report by NASA's Inspector General in May 2023 also cautioned NASA about excessive spending on the RS-25 main engines and solid rocket boosters. If those costs aren't kept in check, it could pose a threat to the plans for returning to the moon. The report found that efforts to refurbish RS-25 engines, manufacture new ones, and produce solid rocket boosters for the initial Artemis missions have resulted in about $6 billion in cost increases and more than six years in scheduled delays compared to NASA's original projections. There are other headache-inducing issues raised in the report. For example, the current cost to produce a new RS-25 main engine, which will be used for Artemis 5 missions onwards, is approximately 100 mil. NASA and Aerojet are attempting to save 30% of the cost by the end of the decade, reducing it to about 70.5 million. Compared to the private sector, even reducing the price of an RS-25 engine to $70.5 million is considered excessively high. Blue Origin manufactures engines with similar power and size like the BE-4 priced at under $20 million. SpaceX is also working on pushing the cost of their powerful Raptor rocket engines even lower, potentially less than $1 million an engine. Based on all the new data in this report, the adjusted estimate for the total cost of a single launch of the SLS, including ground systems in the Orion spacecraft, it's now $4.2 billion. In general, with its expensive cost and unproven technical reliability, SLS continues to raise doubts among many about its ability to fulfill its missions. However, a brighter spot in this story is the potential for reusable heavy lift rockets like SpaceX's Starship, which is being built to include a configuration to carry astronauts across the moon. Lori Garver, a former NASA deputy admin, expressed surprise that NASA, under President Joe Biden, chose a version of Starship to transport Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface, stating, It's an acknowledgement that Starship's going to work, and if Starship's going to work, then you don't need SLS and Orion. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.